For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's been over a year since the beginning of the Yellow Vests or the Gilets Jaunes movement, which shook France and the whole of Europe. For 53 weeks, mass mobilizations have been taking place across the country. The Yellow West movement is unique because it is as much a movement of the provinces as it is of the Paris region. Its uniqueness also lies in the fact that a spontaneous and self-organized movement without any formal leader or structure has been able to sustain itself for one whole year and is still going on. Of course, these characteristics of the movement also bring with them certain drawbacks. For instance, the number of participants has dwindled and there is some lack of clarity on the way ahead, although there is no shortage of proposals. So one year after it started, let's take a look at the journey and the prospects of this movement. The Yellow West movement began on November 17, 2018 in response to French President Emmanuel Macron's announcing an increase in taxes on fuel. This increase was labelled as a carbon tax and passed off as an environmental measure. But the people did not buy this reasoning. This was because the tax would disproportionately hurt the rural poor who have no option but to rely on cars as public transport has been cut significantly. People began mobilising all over the country wearing the Yellow Vests that are mandatory for motorists. Massive demonstrations were held every weekend with the Yellow Vests occupying roundabouts, blocking highways, commercial areas and places where people gathered. The movement had no real leadership and clear political objective except the cancellation of the fuel tax hike. It was also very heterogeneous. So while some Yellow Vests demonstrated for economic and social reforms, others mobilised on anti-immigrant, Islamophobic and racist agendas. Communists in France have been actively supporting the movement and making efforts to counter the reactionary elements within the movement so a progressive outcome can be reached. So what were the key achievements of the Yellow Vests? The movement's magnitude and relentlessness forced the government to roll back the tax hike within a few weeks. In addition, Macro also announced tax cuts for pensioners and asked bosses to give bonuses to their workers. But these small steps failed to placate the anger of the working and lower middle classes. In the words of Cyril Beno of the Young Communist Movement of France, the Yellow West movement is not just about the rise in the fuel tax. It's a crystallization of deep social discontent and distress. The anger against the hike in one tax had evolved into one against a government and a president who was disconnected from the people. The protesters' demands have become much broader as the movement went on. They sought changes that would address the root causes of their problems rather than surface fixes. For instance, they wanted to reinstate the wealth tax that was removed in 2017. The Yellow Vests have also been vehemently opposing Macron's proposal for pension reforms, which will result in people losing around 30% of the benefits they get in the current system. The Yellow West also inspired similar movements in Iraq, the UK and Italy. However, like in France, in these countries too, the far right has made attempts to co-opt the movement with its regressive xenophobic character. Let's look at the major challenges faced by the Yellow Wests. To begin with, they faced immense repression from the police. At least four people have died and some estimates have put the number at 10. Thousands have been injured and dozens have been disabled. Over 15,200 people have been arrested, with at least 1,000 people being imprisoned. On the other hand, the police have enjoyed complete immunity, with only two of its members being indicted till now for all this violence. As we mentioned earlier, the lack of formal structures and a clear agenda has given the space to far-right elements to attempt to drive the movement in favour of their interests. The media and the government, however, have exaggerated the influence of these far-right movements and painted the whole movement as being fascistic. Marine Le Pen, Leader of the far-right national rally has also used the right-wing participation to her advantage. She has tried to portray the movement as being anti-migrant and in line with her policies. However, it's important to know that she has also rejected the demands for increase in minimum wages and pensions. And finally, the Yellow West have since the beginning rejected all political parties and unions and expressed deep distrust in bureaucracy of all kinds. And although the left and the unions in the country have been trying to steer the movement in a more progressive direction, they have not been too successful. During the European parliamentary elections in May, major sections of the Yellow Vests are believed to have voted for the national rally in order to defeat Macron, although Macron's list was still successful. The left in the country has recognised that ousting Macron cannot be the only agenda if major social and economic transformation is to be achieved. Simply replacing Macron 
with another similar neoliberal figurehead will not yield any kind of justice or equity of any sort. The structures that create and perpetuate this inequality need to be exposed and dismantled by the French people. What is the future of the movement? The number of participants in the movement is much less now and there are a number of reasons. One of course is the exhaustion of the movement not really going anywhere after the initial victories. The lack of a common progressive agenda for all the protesters is yet another reason. And then of course there is a constant violent police repression and media distortion which is also not helping protests. However, the number of people continuing the fight cannot be ignored. Such crystallized discontent among the people seems inextinguishable in the near future. The ultra-right-wing components in society are trying to push the protests in a single direction with one agenda, ousting Macron. They are also aiming for electoral dividends by channelizing the protests against refugees and migrants, thereby polarizing the country. But the left in France is making many efforts to orient the protest to achieve much needed social reforms in the country. They are actively organizing mobilizations of working class, students, youth etc. on the sidelines of the larger movement. They are aware of the fact that just replacing Macron will not solve the problem. Two weeks ago, a countrywide meeting of the Yellow Vests, called the Assembly of Assemblies, decided to join France's largest trade union, CGT, in the general strike scheduled to begin on December 5th. The fight is definitely not over. Yeah, cantar, que vamos a triunfar, avanzar.